All right, look, everybody, I am Swedish, and that's why I keep saying Amenbrek instead of Amenbrek. And I know that annoys some people, and I'm also very annoying in real life, so I had to pause all work because Amenbrek just got a big update. And that update is AUV3 compatibility. And even though this is something that I've never really needed for Almond Break Generator, I know that a lot of other iOS musicians do need it. And some people just will not buy an app that doesn't have support for AUV3. But now it does, so now you have no excuses. For beginners that don't understand what AUV3 is, it's a plugin format just like VSTs and audio units on desktop and laptop systems. Either way, this means that we can now load Almond Break Generator as a plugin into Timeline Arranger type DOS like Logic Pro for iPad, Cubasis, and also into other types of AUE3 hosts like AUM and Ape Matrix, and also into Groove Boxes like BAM and also Drambo. I have to say Drambo because if I don't, one of my Discord members is gonna start crying. <laughs> Now, when we load Almond Break Generator into an AUV3 host, we can also control it with MIDI node data. So, if you've got some hardware MIDI controllers, like one of these or something similar, you can use that. Or you can use a virtual keyboard, like the ones that are built in into a lot of DAWs. There are even some AUV3 MIDI keyboards, like KB1 from Kai Aras, who is also one of my best friends. So here I've got AUM, I've got Almond Break Generator loaded, and when you have it loaded like this, if you wanna start and stop playback of the looping here, you cannot press anything inside Almond Break Generator. No, because as soon as it loads into a host, the host takes over the transport functions. So we're gonna locate the playback button over here and press it, and Almond Break Generator starts playing. And now we can start triggering it like we normally do. Now, if we have a keyboard connected, then we can trigger the slices from this note up to this note. And if we want to switch the loop in the middle of us triggering stuff, then we can use the keys from this note up to this note. So the first eight are the factory loops that come with Almond Break Generator. And the other eight are basically the user ones, those that you can load yourself, because that's another update that Almond Break Generator got. Now, what's not ideal with this situation here is that we cannot user define how these ranges works for these functions. Because for mobile musicians or mobile music producers that uses smaller keyboards, well, usually we only have access to about two octaves of keys. That's 25 keys and you would need 32 keys to get access to all features. But right now, they're spread far apart across a keyboard and you pretty much need a larger keyboard in order to access both of the features at the same time, slicing and loop switching. But there could be solutions to that too if you have a way of actually changing how the internals work in your MIDI controller. Some controllers have an editor that will allow you to do that. And that is something I could do with my Korg Nano Key Studio. So I borrowed a laptop from my partner and I ran that Nano Series editor that Korg has put out for free. And I made it so that these pads up here would send out MIDI note data that would allow me to change the user-defined loops, the ones that you can load yourself. And then I could trigger the slices directly from the keyboard. So there are solutions. It's not available for every MIDI controller out there, but I just wanted to bring this up for those of you who like working with controllers rather than just touching a screen. And then again, the developer could help out here for those that can't do that with user-definable ranges for these functions. 
Now, there is a new function in here, which is like an auto looping mode that allows you to loop the last 16 slices you triggered. And so if we activate this and we just trigger 16 slices and then let go, it will just keep looping those 16 slices you looped. And you can easily go back and trigger something else and it will keep looping the last 16 slices. This is a really nice mode that the developer added. There's been a bunch of other improvements and I'm sure we'll be able to see more really cool stuff come to this app in the future. Now, if you wanna load your own loops into Break Generator, you go here and you switch over to the user bank on this button. Then what you need to do is to long press on a button and it will open up the files app window. Now here we can access our loops wherever they might be. I don't know where you store yours, but I store mine in an app called AudioShare, which is an old app, but I use it because it is so useful for managing things, but it can also convert things because whatever you're loading has to be a 16-bit file. And so if you're loading a loop and it doesn't load properly for you, then it might be that it is of the wrong bitrate. And with an app like AudioShare, you can easily go to AudioShare and go to that loop and just go up here and go into the conversion menu and then convert it to the right format by going to 16. And I'm even gonna do 16 bits in 44.1 kilohertz. And now when we try to load it inside Armabrake Generator, we don't have any problems, it just loads. Now, this is something I want the developer to keep working on because it would be nice to be able to load any type of bitrate really. I want to finish this video off by saying I've been wrong about two things I was absolutely certain about. And one of those moments was when I saw that Korg put out an update that made the gadgets AUV3 compatible. I never ever thought they would go that route, but they did. So if you missed it, you can use all of those um, gadgets as a UV3s. Not all of them. There are some that aren't available like Korg Monopoly and an ARP and some others, but yeah. The other thing I was wrong about was I'm a brake generator and it was such a nice experience being wrong about it because I had made this video basically it, it titled like the best beat juggling app that you cannot buy and I was lamenting the fact that I'm a brake generator was gone. I was certain it wouldn't come back, but the developers saw that video and contacted me on Instagram and they said, hey, I'm bringing it back. I can't even find words to describe to you how happy that made me. So I was wrong. It came back. And not only that, the developer had a plan for Arm and Brake Generator. And they've kept improving on it, which is very, very cool. And I love it so much. And so, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say in this video about Arm and Brake Generator. But there's just one more thing I want to highlight. You see, this developer has a certain way of thinking about app concepts and not only that, but concepts on how to make music and stuff. And they made an app called Scratch It and you have to try it out. Now this one, I don't think it has AUV3 support yet or anything like that, but it is a scratching app. It does allow you to load your own samples to be scratched, but right now the background music cannot be switched out. There are about eight tracks in there, I think, that you can scratch to. And so, yeah, there's still some improvements that needs to be done. But what's so interesting here is that the developer has programmed in some patterns and some modulations that mimics some core scratching techniques that you just have to learn if you want to get into scratching. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I put a link to both Almond Break Generator and also Scratch It down in the pinned comment and also in the description. And I highly urge you to go test them out. These are really fun apps and I really want to see this developer make more and more apps. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for continuing supporting the work I do here. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Hello everybody and welcome to my farm. This is my farm and right now it's winter so all the animals are inside. I have cows and chickens. Hello cow. And I also have some uh, dinosaurs. There's a dinosaur over here, the green one. <laughs> yeah. 